My work requires that I often go on business trips. I like the job. I like meeting new people. I like visiting new cities. But for this story, that's neither here nor there. I had just arrived in Chicago and settled down in a place you probably would call high class. I'd personally never shell out the exorbitant funds required for these sorts of things. But if the company's paying, then hey, I'm not complaining. One night, I had come back to my hotel room drunk as hell after a night out with some clients. At some point during the early morning hours, I went into the bathroom and slipped on some water. I fell back into the wall space between the toilet and the shower. I stuck out my arm. But then, my arm actually went straight through the wall. I wasn't sure why such a fancy place used such fragile materials for their rooms. But this oddity really didn't seem right. The fall really wasn't all that hard. I couldn't understand how the wall broke so easily. I stepped back, staring at the gaping, newly formed hole. Now, I wasn't exactly sure how hotels were designed in relation to how much space there is between the rooms, but I was under the assumption that they were built side by side. If that was the case, then there must have now been a hole in my neighbor's closet or something which was rather concerning. It was late as hell, so I decided to wait until morning to tell them about it, so they didn't freak out and think I was some weird creep making holes in their walls. The morning came and I knocked on their door. They opened up and were mostly understanding about what had happened. They then took me around showing me each of their rooms, but there was no hole to be found. All right, I thought to myself. Don't have to worry about anything there, but I still have to tell the front desk or something. I wasn't really prepared to pay for the damages, to be honest. It's not my fault you're so damn cheap with your building, you know? However, I decided to put it off until after all my work was done. I came back the following night and took a look at the hole again. It was quite large. Out of curiosity, I took my phone flashlight and shined it through the hole. If this didn't lead to a room, Then what was it? Just random empty space in between? The first thing I saw was an old looking notebook lying on the ground. Interesting. I reached in, straining my fingertips but managing to pick it up. After wiping a thin layer of dust off of it, I inspected it further. It wasn't really distinctive looking, just a plain red notebook you could probably buy anywhere. But it was the contents inside that were disconcerting. It was just page after page of messily scribbled nonsense. At least, that's what I thought it was, at first. There was definitely a pattern in the haphazard symbols on the pages, though. Another language? Maybe. I wasn't sure, though. Occasionally, there would also be diagrams on some of the pages. These were easier to understand, but still rather cryptic. They looked like detailed blueprints of a building. After a few seconds of looking through it, I came to the definitive conclusion that it was the hotel. What caught my eye was the 15th floor, which was labeled more clearly than the others. There was what looked to be a staircase descending down from one of the rooms, cutting through the floors below. Didn't really show or describe where it was supposed to lead. The only word at the end of the staircase was... Zone CKX9. Now, I'm not sure how many nope situations you've been in, but this probably fits the bill. Despite that, I kept looking through that hole, just in case there was anything else. And there certainly was. With mostly melted candles scattered all around it, there was what appeared to be a trap door in the center of the floor. I felt my blood freeze in my veins. Was I supposed to deduce that it contained a staircase? On the 15th floor? Eventually, I just forced myself to laugh at the absurdity. I mean, there was no way it was possible, right? I made a decision right then and there. I began tearing down the wall some more, just so that I had enough space to crawl through, into the hidden room. It really wasn't much bigger than a walk-in closet. Unfurnished wooden floors, walls, and a ceiling with that weird trap door in the middle. 
I took a moment of hesitation before opening it. I mean, if it really did contain a staircase, there was no chance in hell I was going down there. I reached down and grabbed the metal handle, feeling around for any kind of padlock. There wasn't any, so I finally lifted the handle, not really knowing what to expect. There was only blackness at first, and then I shined my light into it. Stairs. There were actually stairs inside of this trap door. It shocked me so much that I instinctively closed it. I sat there for a moment, astounded. I started believing that it was just some weird illusion. With that in mind, I opened it up again and carefully stuck my hand down, past the threshold. They really were stairs. I spent the next few hours trying to figure out what could have been underneath my room. I asked around, did the research, and even went down a floor to see for myself, but everything yielded the same conclusion. It was just supposed to be another room. I knocked on the door of the person that I had mapped out to be right below me, but nobody answered. Defeated, I went back to my room to do some research online. However, I could find no similar experiences posted. In this situation, I did the one thing I thought was appropriate. I went to my coworker, Jacob's room, and told him about it. At first, he was a bit bothered that I was knocking on his door at 1am, but I knew he'd be interested in this. He was one of those brash, paranormal aficionado guys. A bit annoying at times, but I'd say we were friendly enough. After I had explained the situation to him, he let out a skeptical and somewhat obnoxious groan. He still elected to come check it out, though. During the walk up, I was slightly concerned that it was going to be one of those situations where the whole room disappears or something. But when we got to my bathroom, it was still there. Still weird as ever. When I opened it up and revealed the stairs, I could see a look of shock spread across Jacob's face. I doubt he ever actually experienced anything paranormal before, despite all the stories he always tells. This was uncharted territory for the both of us. We mused for a few hours, deliberating on whether or not to go down. Well, it was actually just Jacob trying to convince me to go down with him. Come on, I remember him telling me. What a story this would make. For whatever reason, he was adamant about going through with this insane stunt. Eventually, I agreed to go down 10 steps and then right back up, just to see what was going on and to put a stop to his begging. We turned on our flashlights and he went first. As soon as my body descended into whatever the hell this place was, I could feel the atmosphere shift around me. Hard to explain, but it wasn't like when your ears pop at high altitudes, it was similar yet different. I went down the 10 steps that I had promised before stopping and analyzed my surroundings. It wasn't like I could see much anyways though. It was just dark, incomprehensibly dark. I watched as Jacob continued further and further down. Are you sure this is a good idea? I said to him. None of this makes any sense. He had gone probably eight steps further than I before turning to reply to me. Dude, this is crazy. Are you coming? Screw that, I told him. What is this place? As I said this, his expression changed from amusement to concern. What is it? I asked him. Did you hear that? He replied. I strained my ears trying to figure out what he was referring to. It was faint, but... There. Water? I couldn't really tell if it sounded more like somebody was sloshing around in ankle-deep water or if they were actually swimming down there, but it was extremely far down, causing me to wonder how deep this place actually was. And then, Jacob did the stupidest thing anybody could have done in that scenario. He yelled out, Who's down, Who's down, there? down there? And in the near utter silence of this apparently massive room, the echo seemed to carry it endlessly. It was quiet after that. Extremely quiet. No more movement. Whatever was down there had reacted. What happened next nearly gave me a heart attack. Heavy, 
wet footsteps began sprinting up the stairs. They were still faint at first, but they increased at an inhuman pace. Jacob and I followed suit, scrambling the hell back of the staircase ourselves. In the commotion, I had dropped the notebook on the steps as I panicked. We crashed back into the room, closing the trap door behind us. As soon as we did this, the footsteps ceased. But we didn't have peace of mind yet. There was no lock on the trap door, and the door itself wasn't very heavy. Jacob quickly lugged the coffee table through the washroom back into the hidden room, and then placed it upside down, pinning the trap door shut. After that, we just stood there, breathless. We glanced at each other, both of our minds probably on the same page. We still had three more days left on this business trip. I didn't really get much sleep that night, even after I barricaded the bathroom door with the dresser. I kind of wish that I hadn't dropped that book back there. Maybe I could have analyzed it further, uncovering any possible answers to what we had experienced. But for obvious reasons, I don't think going back down there is the best idea right now.